Hello everybody! In today's Touch Designer tutorial, we will be learning about how to create the simple patterns uh, through very few selected nodes. And it's kind of very creative because as you can see, we are using very, very few components of Touch Designer and we are able to produce some of the best outputs. So in this tutorial, we will actually create this pattern. Uh, we'll also create uh, this pattern. So you'd see that um, the basic inline foundation is same and we are just trying to repurpose the existing model and trying to define it in such a way that we can produce number of patterns. So this is the second pattern that we would learn. Uh, then we have this where um, we will be able to produce the output. Uh, based on the similar concept, it just that the positioning of the block is kind of different and it produces altogether a different output for, for, for us. And uh, at the end, we would actually see how to create this output as well. But yes, inline foundation is going to be the same where we have a few things which we play around with, we tweak the properties, we learn new concepts about the time, and uh, yeah, I mean, how to use some of the basic operators in a most um, uh, beautiful way so that we can produce some good output. So yeah, it's going to be a short tutorial, but it's going to be really, really cool, which will allow you to produce uh, such sort of output. Okay, so let's get going. So first thing first, let's clear the canvas. Uh, and what are we going to do is, since we are dealing with patterns, um, uh, it is very prominent that we have to have a circle, right? So let's start adding a circle first. Now, before adding the circle, one thing that you really need to be uh, watchful about is the resolution of the circle that you're going to add. So once you add circle, go to common, change the resolution from 256 to 1024. And we also want to change the pixel format from use input to 32-bit float. We want to ensure that circles are sticking to the boundaries of the node which has been created. So we can change uh, from 0.4 to we can make it 0.5, but I would want to leave little space. And for that, I would want to uh, change the radius from 0.5 to 0.499. And here as well. So I have little space. So this is going to be useful when we actually combine things together um, in, the further in the further phase of our project. So circle is done. Now let's add constant. So we have constant here. Same, we change the resolution from 256 to 1024. And we change the pixel format to 32-bit float RGBA. Let's change the circle's color from white to complete black. Now what we do is, let's have composite. Let's combine them together. And we say over. So we have things. And since we had 0.499 as the radius, we can see little tiny space, which is helping us to preserve things uh, when we go further. Okay, so this is good. This is good for now. Uh, what we really need is, um, I let's let's try and play around a little bit. So I go use the so center position of the circle. So we have got X position, we have got Y position through which I can change the center of the circle. So for now, let's try and make it as 0.5. So we can see the circle is at the top. I also need another circle at the bottom. Now, that can be created by just recreating this entire stuff, but I don't want to do that. I would use transform. So let's use transform and change the rotation of the transform to 180. So we get upper half circle, you get lower half circle. Now what we do is let's use composite and combine them together. So by combining it, we are ensuring that we have the required pattern to go around with. 
Okay, so this is the starting point for our entire exercise. Now, since we have this only one pattern, we want to create multiple patterns of it. Now, that multiplication of the patterns can be done through transform. Let's use transform. Let's change the scale to 0.2 for now. Okay, and by changing the scale, you can see that in center we have the pattern, but other part is completely hollow. That can be changed by going to a tile property of the transform node and making it as repeat. And by making it as a repeat, we get this change in the pattern. Now what we want to do is let's try and play around a little bit to find out how well the position of the circle can produce the output that we need. Okay, so now let's change the output. Um, yeah. So this is something definitely that we wanted as a part of our pattern creation, right? Now, this is something that we wanted to create and we are able to see it. So the question is, how do we ensure that this movement can, can be made in a, in a very smooth way so that we don't have to play around and change the value of center position X and Y to change the position of the circle? Right. So that can be pretty much be done through LFO. So let's introduce LFO for now. OK, we use one LFO to change the value of circle. But now, as you can see, the LFO has got amplitude and LFO has got frequency. Change the frequency from one to point one. OK, so this becomes very smooth for us. Now, this will be used to ensure we change the value of circle. So let's use the output of LFO to change the value of X, okay? So done, this is good, but still it is not up to the point where it is changing the value of Y. But I want to ensure that it only changes the value of Y when the value of X is set, right? And for that to happen, I would be using another LFO. So this second LFO will be used for the position of Y. So let's try and change the phase value from 0 to 0 0.41. So by changing the phase value, you can play around and uh, you can get some different outputs. And at this point of time, keeping the phase value as 0 0.41 will definitely help to get the output the way in which we need it. So let's try and change um, the position of Y driven by LFO2. So let's use that. And now we see outputs are coming up, but still not to the point that we need it. So for that to happen, there is a little bit of hold that we want to create. So when the values of X are changed, we want to hold the value until, until 0.5, right? So that holding of the value can be created using limit operator. So let's use limit and in type, I would use a clamp. So anything and everything that goes between minimum and maximum, that will be clamped automatically by limit operator. So let's use a minus 0.499 as a clamp. And let's use plus 499 as the clamp, right? So I'm ensuring that my values are being clamped between these, uh, um, between the values which has been specified between minimum and maximum. Let's use the same limit and use the input of LFO2 to limit two. So it does the same thing. Now let's try and change the center X and center Y based on limit one and limit two, okay? And we use limit two to change the value of y. All right. So this is definitely something that we wanted to create as a part of our design. So as we can see, the values are definitely changing. But you can see that there is little bit of fast movement happening. I want to hold my values there as well. Now that holding of the value can be created by changing the amplitude of LFO2 
from 1 to 1.5. So that gives us a little bit of space and this is how a pattern can be created, right? So this is exactly how we create first pattern. Now let's try and create another pattern, okay? Now that another pattern, uh, the creation of that is kind of very simple. So let's try and, uh, okay, let's use transform, okay? So I'll be using four transform basically. So this is transform one, two, three, and four, done. What am I gonna do is, I'm just going to change the size of all the uh, output coming from transform to 0.25. Actually, 2.5 is going to be too small, so let's change it to 0.5 for now. Yes, 0.5 seems to be perfect. What we really need to do is, let's change the position of all of these squares coming in, and um, let's align them to this corner. Then let's have this one to be aligned to this corner. Let's have this square aligned to this one, and let's have this square aligned to that one. And that alignment can be done through the translate position. So let's try and take this one into 0.25. Now let's take it up by putting the value as 0.25. So it was minus 0.25 and this is plus 2.25. Now we need this one to be at the uh, lower bottom corner. Now that can be changed by minus 0.25. So it is at the bottom and I need to be at the right. So I'll change the X translate value to 0.25, done. Let's have this one at the left corner. So left corner can be created by changing the X value from zero to minus 0.25. And since I need it on the left side, my X value is gonna be minus 0.25, done. Now I need at the top corner. That can be done with X value as 0.25 and Y value, uh, sorry, Y value to be 0.25 and X value to be 0.25, done. Once this is done, let's use a composite operator and let's combine all of them together with add. And now change can be created by just changing the value of rotation. And we change two values and this is where we get a different output altogether. So there are endless way through which we can produce the output. So this is one pattern that we see. Uh, we can change the value. Now let's, let's do this way. So now let's try and use another method. Let's, let's make it really creative. I'm going to use level and the output of comp2, I'll send it to level. And instead of the existing pattern that I have, I'm going to invert the colors. So I'm going to invert the colors. So black becomes white and white becomes black. Now, instead of passing these two, these two outputs to transform four and five, I am going to use the output of level to change the value. And now we can see the output as what we needed. So this is exactly what we can produce as a part of changing, um, no, changing the output from a normal comp to inverted level. Now, this is one pattern that we created. The other thing that we could do is we can remove the rotation. Instead of 90, we can just make it as zero. So we have another pattern altogether. Uh, same thing can be done by removing the rotation value from 90 to zero. And we see a pattern altogether. So it's, it's kind of very simple. It's, it's very creative as well. 
Uh, because there are very few operators that we are trying and using to create the output um, in, a, in a nicer way. Now, there's only one last pattern that we want to create. So let's try and play around. So we change the value of second transform, uh, the rotation value, from 90 to 0. Let's make it as 90, OK? And we change the fourth transform's rotation value from 90 to 0. Let's make it as 90. So now we see this pattern, OK? Let's stop our timeline for now. What we really want to do is let's take this one from lower bottom to the top, to the right top, OK? Now, that can be created by changing this minus to plus. So this has gone up. And let's take this one down. So by changing from plus to minus. And we see a new pattern. So now we can see a different output altogether. Someone could be thinking, OK, what else can be created in this? Now, uh, there is definitely a few more changes that you can create. We can go to final output of transform, and we can change the transform rotation value from 0 to 90. So we see instead of horizontal patterns, now we see the vertical patterns. Uh, you can also create uh, a rotation as uh, the moving rotation, ABS time dot seconds into five. Yeah, so we can have continuous rotating pattern that can also produce some of the good output. Uh, you can play around with the scale. So currently it is at point uh, two. We can make it as point one. So this gives very dense output and it is really, really looking cool. You can change the value from 0.2 to 0.4. Um, again, it depends on your taste and how well you would want to see your output to come alive. Uh, the other thing that you can try and play is you can change from repeat to mirror. So by changing into mirror, you see something really, really amazing. Now, this can be created. Um, you also have an option of playing around here. So we had rotation value as 90. Uh, we can change it to 0. And you see a completely new different output pattern, which looks amazing. So there are endless possibilities that you have in your hand when you actually want to try and play around. But yeah, this is something you can definitely create by using very, very few components of Touch Designer. Again, the, my tutorials, I try to make it very simple, very fundamental so that you can understand a lot and you can try and figure things out by yourself. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. By the way, I do have to let you know that I've got my Instagram, I've got my YouTube. It will be amazing if you guys can subscribe to my channel, uh, if you can like, comment, um, if, you can, uh, if you can just put your feedback on the stuff that I create. It really brings a lot of happiness to me. Uh, and yeah, I do have Patreon. So if you can support me on Patreon, that is going to be a big help for me. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed some of the creative stuff that can be created in a very simplistic way. And um, yeah, I hope to see you guys in next tutorial. By the way, this is the first tutorial of 2023. I've got uh, big plans for 2023. So you will definitely see a lot of good contents coming out for 2023. And um, yeah, I wish you a new year and uh, hope all of you enjoy this year with a lot of good stuff. Thank you. Bye for now from Sydney.